Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update, and we're in it. We've got our storm system. I want to go to a radar out of Wyoming. This gives you a nice perspective. You can see the circulation happening between Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. Everything's sort of pivoting around, but heavy snow and very strong winds across uh, Wyoming and Colorado and you can see snow continuing over the Wasatch that'll continue all the way through tonight before then it tapers off overnight into tomorrow morning you could still add another three to seven inches up there in the Wasatch out of all this let me take you into Colorado and show you the radar um, and there it is boy look at that uh, area of low pressure circulating you got some severe uh, thunderstorms around North Platte um, on the warm sector, in the warm sector of this. And on the back side, we're just getting washed by the jet down here with 80 to 90, even 100 mile an hour winds in my forecast through tonight and into tomorrow morning across the Front Range, the Continental Divide, the foothills. Those preferred areas are just going to get blasted all night. And you can see the snow continuing in the mountains. All right, here's what I'm seeing in this, this afternoon update. So we've got our storm system that will continue through tomorrow for a number of places, um, including Colorado and parts of Wyoming as this thing begins to pull away. Now, the next full-blown storm system arrives 413, 14, and 15 across the Intermountain West. Um, like I was saying, through tonight and tomorrow morning, 75 to 100 mile an hour winds in Colorado. Um, we're seeing those develop as I speak right now. It's uh, the pressure gradients ramping up. That'll be the case through tomorrow morning. And then the winds will gradually lighten tomorrow as the day wears on. Um, here's the timing for the Wasatch Tetons, Colorado in the Northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, moderate to heavy snow through tonight and then it's done. And then the next shot comes in moderate to heavy accumulation for 13, 14, and 15. In Colorado, moderate snow accumulation tonight, light on 4, 8, and then heavy accumulation afternoon 4, 13, 14, and 15. In the northeast, things just look even a couple of degrees warmer, thinking this might just be rain 4, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So we'll look at all that in this forecast update. I want to go over to water vapor satellite imagery here. Oh, first, I want to show you what it looks like in Colorado. So I pulled this. This is the kind of thing we're dealing with. This is up at, uh, this is Chet Stream up at Loveland Ski Area. Low visibility, heavy snow at times, so you've got uh, just strong winds, ridiculously strong winds, falling temperatures, so it's been turning colder. We're in the single digits now up there at about 12,000 feet. So that's kind of what we're dealing here, uh, dealing with here in Colorado. All right, here's the, uh, the water vapor. So on this, your whites, your blues, your greens, or your moisture aloft, and there's our storm system with all of that wind and that snow. So eventually that moves away. It's just going to take its time. There's a little bit of energy that may slide in on the southern half of this through southern Colorado and northern New Mexico and kind of get hung up um, potentially. I'll show you that on the forecast radar. Now behind it, you've got an area of low pressure here. You've got another one back here. Let me just show you how this plays out with the jet stream. So there's your forecast jet by close of business today. You can see the big strong winds over Colorado. So you can also see a little bit of a kink in the flow coming out of uh, uh, the Pacific in the Pacific Northwest. So that's another area of low pressure that tries to dive in very quickly on the southern end of this, this powerful Colorado, Wyoming, Utah storm system that's moving away. It may get hung up. There's 4-7. There it is. It dives down into New Mexico. And you can kind of see the trough there. Um, sliding through the four corners. So that might be a four eight, four nine scenario right there as it slides through. And then it's gone. Then we have to refocus. Now watch for the next change. Here comes on the northern branch 413, 414, and 415. So it brings jet energy. You've got a nice cold front with that. So we should see some decent accumulations with that 413 to 415 storm system. Here's the forecast radar at 530 and satellite at 530 today. You can see the snow in Wyoming, Montana. You got the snow in Colorado. You got the snow in the Wasatch and in Idaho. Watch what happens. The storm just kind of spins. It's very slow to move away. Even tomorrow morning, still a lot of wind in Colorado. That cyclonic curvature on the backside is pretty dirty. And then it moves. It starts to move away. But notice, here comes that next trough I pointed out, that very fast, minor low area of low pressure. The first storm is moving away so slowly that the second one kind of comes in and may get hung up on the southern end of this thing. Watch what happens on 4.8. So the, there it is. You see what happens down in southern Colorado, Four Corners, New Mexico. That's that, uh, that area of energy. And it kind of just sits there in the 4-9 and then it moves away. Now here comes the next full-blown storm system here in the extended forecast 
a few days of high pressure, but then by 413, here it comes. Tetons, Wasatch drops into Colorado, and then it just it spins up into a nice area of low pressure there. Um, so that runs through 415. Okay, let's look at the latest numbers. Here's what I've got. Grand total map by late 415. Um, so some good numbers, still potentially 10 to 20 as far as grand totals go in the Wasatch. You account for what's left tonight, and then, of course, that next storm system, 4, 13, 14, and 15. That's where we get to that. Uh, potentially a foot or more in the Tetons yet to go. In Colorado, looking at about 8 to 16, maybe 10 to 20 if we're lucky. A lot of what you see in Colorado, there's a little bit that continues tonight into tomorrow morning, but that second storm that comes in on 4, 13, 14, and 15 delivers a lot of what you see right there. Some good numbers in the Pacific Northwest as well, looking at one to two feet up there in Washington State and parts of uh, BC along the coast. Okay, let me um, just show you what this looks like in time. So here we go. This is the rest of today through tomorrow. Again, tonight I think we could see another 3 to 7 in the Wasatch, another couple in the Tetons, and another 1 to 3, maybe 1 to 4 in Colorado. Next time period is 4, 8 to 4, 10. Kind of light transition period. That little low that gets hung up in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico may drop 1 to 4 inches of accumulation. Final time period is pretty big, 411 to 415. That's that storm that comes in with the buckling northern branch, drops some nice snow through Whistler, Baker, Rainier, Stevens, and Timberline, and some nice snow through Big Sky and Jackson and Grand uh, Turkey, and potentially 6 to 12 inches in the Wasatch. And again, that's where we pick up a lot of accumulation in Colorado, potentially 8 to 16 inches in that time frame alone. Okay, let's talk about the Northeast. So I don't have much here. The precip that comes in late in the period, what is it, 412 through 415 or 413 through 415, most of it looks like rain showers. There may be some snow on Mount Washington and some of the highest, very highest terrain, but right now it looks like we're going to be a couple degrees too warm or maybe even a few degrees too warm. All right, guys, we're going to end it here on the grand total map um, by late 415. So winter's not over. We still have that, that, that storm system, that next full-blown storm system coming for 13, 14, and 15. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it, and take care.